In our global future, we face many challenges, whether it's drug-resistant bacteria, financial instability, or climate change, and solutions to these will involve creative and collaborative approaches. But given that science has shown that kids have some of the most creative brains, should kids be solving the world's problems? Even though we don't get to spend very much time with young people or students, when we do, it's always so rejuvenating and fascinating to see how intelligent and smart they are, which is why we were so excited to be part of the Samsung Solve for Tomorrow Challenge. We got to see young people in schools across the country come together to solve community problems using STEM. The two winning schools included Gordon Graydon in Mississauga, Ontario, which developed a method to remove microbeads from our lakes, and South Colchester Academy in Brookfield, Nova Scotia, who came up with solutions to keep their local river from a road and flooding school and community property. Meeting these amazing student innovators reminded us of all the amazing inventions created by kids. Jack and Draca developed a method in high school for detecting pancreatic cancer and other cancers similar to that of a diabetic test strip. At 16 years old, Ella Filgan made a bioplastic from banana peels in order to decrease the pollution used from petroleum-based plastics. Boy and Slat developed a system to collect garbage from the oceans. And fellow Canadian Ann Makazinski made a hollow flower flashlight that used body heat to power a light. All of these innovators were under 20 years old, so we decided to ask some students ourselves, how did they do it? Adults tend to overthink things, and with a kid, everything is possible. Big imaginations, whereas adults, they kind of think, oh no, that's not possible, so we're not even gonna try it. But then as kids, we're just like, well, even if it doesn't work out, we still had fun. Kids, their imagination just runs wild. So I feel like we all have imagination. It's just that when, when we're in a younger age, it's so much easier to tap into that. We try something that we think is right, and we take a risk. I definitely think young people can change the world. A three-year-old's brain has 15,000 synapses per neuron, which is nearly double that of an adult. Though this number continues to decrease through childhood and adolescence, children still have more neural connections than we do as adults, and it allows them to make creative links that we can't. A recent study investigated creative ideas for new smartphone technology by asking both adults and young people to come up with ideas, and it turned out that the young people had ideas that were more implementable, more original, and more relevant. I think that teens are more creative than adults just because adults like they they're older and they kind of are feel like they're restricted by the society. Kids they don't know they haven't been told like you're not allowed to do this, so they have a vivid imagination. Teenagers they're kind of in that sweet spot, that like moment where they're not kids, so they've experienced enough of life to kind of give them like an inspiration into what they can do and like kind of broaden their ideas so they can pull from their previous experience. We don't know what the norms are yet in like business culture or anything, so we think, oh well. Why can't I do this? Let's just let's just do this. Often, scientific discoveries are attributed to one person, but the biggest breakthroughs in STEM are a result of collaboration. Studies find that when we work in diverse groups of people, we are more creative, diligent, and hardworking. Teens, in particular, are better at collaborating because their brains are primed for communication and they have strong emotional connections. Everybody thinks differently, so everybody will come up with different ideas each equally as good. If you're only by yourself, it's kind of hard to come up with 10 different ideas that, and then try and put them all together. I think the problem solving part in a group project is what I find really fun. And when you put that all together, you get one big picture and everyone's opinion is valued in the end. The fact that we all have these different perspectives to how we think we should solve it, it really let like the best ideas come out. And I sort of think like the people like in real life, everyone is a group, so if you're not a group, you're losing out on a lot of things. When you're in a different circumstance, when you come from different countries, when you come from, when you have a different gender, you have a different perspective. And when you work in a group with so many different perspectives, that's when really great ideas start happening. Two heads are better than one. It definitely, they offer like various perspectives perspectives and like different way of thinking so um, the idea isn't just like narrow it's just it's much more open and it's much more practical in that way too. So maybe you're like us and you're not a young person anymore <laughs> but can we channel our inner child to become a more creative problem solver? In a study where undergraduate students were given the Torrance test of creative thinking they were asked what would they do if school was cancelled for the day? Only one of the groups was asked to imagine themselves as their seven-year-old self to answer the same question. It turns out that the group that was channeling their inner child was able to come up with more original and creative ideas. We want to extend a huge thank you to Samsung Canada for asking us to be involved in the Samsung Solve for Tomorrow Challenge, which gave $500,000 worth of in-classroom technology to winning schools, as well as including us as the grand prize <laughs> for the two winners. This challenge allowed us to see students become so inspired by STEM to actually fix an issue in their community. And we are extremely proud and honored to have been a part of it.
Be sure to sign up for more information about next year's program by heading to solvefortomorrow.ca. The two winning schools were brilliant and they made videos about their projects that are amazing, so we're gonna put links to those videos in the description below, so go watch them. Don't forget to follow us on social media and subscribe for more awesome videos. <laughs>